Now, if you go around the HDB neighborhoods, you may have seen before a Kim Lee coffee shop, Jingwei. And for myself, I actually go and tapao chai fan from there quite regularly. I have one near my place at Tiong Bahru area. So today we'll be talking about Kim Lee, who is Singapore's biggest coffee shop owners. And Kim Lee, just to share with you, did a fantastic IPO. Its IPO price was 25 cents, about right now its current price. But guess what its first day closing price was? Let me pull this out for you to see. It jumped more than 100% to close at 55 cents. Fantastic returns, correct? But nonetheless, the price started to slide down for the next couple of years. That is why Warren Buffett always says, don't buy something, even a good company, at IPO. Because there's a good chance you can get a better price somewhere down the years. So there's some truth to it. But nonetheless, let's look at Kim Lee's business operations. Right now, Kim Lee is the biggest coffee shop player. They have 65 coffee shops. At IPO three years ago, they only had 60. So they've been really growing this business gradually. But today, I'll be sharing with you, you know, how to appreciate Kim Lee's business moving forward. It's actually a very simple local business. So it's not complex at all. But I'll also be addressing for you its previous scandal, which actually dragged down the company's reputation by a little bit. So if this topic interests you, continue watching on. Hi guys, welcome back. Now the first part that you should understand is Kim Lee has actually a previous scandal which was not too long ago, just a couple of years. And the story goes like this. You know there's this company called Asian Story Corporation and it used to be a manufacturer for Polka. The CEO of Polka, Mr. Alan Ong at that point of time, actually started Asian Stories Corporation to try to manufacture and as well as to distribute and in the end it became like an indirect competitor just to round things up very quickly. So Polka used to actually engage Miss Vivian Lai, this uh, celebrity, which I'm sure you've seen before, her face on vending machines because it's all over the place. She used to be the ambassador of Polka's drinks. But after this dispute, of course, contracts were terminated. Mr. Alan Ong uh, is no longer representing Polka. And in fact, Mr. Alan Ong was actually due to join Kim Lee. So he actually engineered supposedly, you know, a, a purchase of Asian Story Corporation by Kim Lee for 16 million dollars in cash. So that deal of course was scuppered already and of course it's reported on the annual reports also that the monies have been recovered. Firstly in a 13.4 million and then subsequent tranches of 2.6 million. So no monies are lost by Kim Lee but of course the, the reputation of the CEO and founder has actually been affected. I'll pull this article up for you to see. They've actually been asked to surrender their travel documents, passports, which means like kind of serious investigation in a lot of ways. Hopefully that shakes up things with them uh, more carefully. I guess in a lot of ways when a company after IPO has a lot of cash, they are thinking how to grow quickly, then they can't lose their prudence. That's my personal in interpretation of things. Hopefully they grow the business more conservatively and do their bread and butter business better moving forward. Now in this segment, let's deep dive in terms of the operations for Kim Lee. And the first thing that we should take note of is the profit profit for the company itself. You know, Kim Lee IPO'd in 2017 and the year before they did their record year and it clocked 24 million. But what we can see, which I'm trying to illustrate in this red arrow, is that profit has been sliding across the years and that is a concern for any investor. And what's happening to the share price is of course the share price has also declined because share price reflects in a lot of ways forward-looking numbers in terms of the business operations. The star there is of course the first day closing price at 55 cents and subsequently Kim Lee together with this scandal has already lost quite a lot of market share, market, market value to be exact. They even closed lower than 20 cents at some point of time. So if we look in terms of the numbers, what is really going on with Kim Lee? I have a few numbers to quickly illustrate the story. Kim Lee has two key businesses, outlet management as well as food retail. Outlet management is the coffee shop management whereby they rent out space, correct? So that is actually very stable. Whether there's a pandemic, uh, a lockdown measure, food is essential service, which means that should not have any impact at all. The red arrows I'm trying to draw is actually the profit margin. Profit margin has been sliding for this segment by a little bit across the years. Maybe because there's a bit more vacancy in terms of the, the, the coffee shop space. Some are not leased out. But if I compare across five years, the numbers are still roughly the same, around the 9% range in terms of profit margin. So outlet management, which is coffee shop management, is actually very, very simple business and yet very profitable in a lot of ways. It looks as though the food retail is the shining light, correct? So that's why I've highlighted in yellow over there. You see that the, the profit before tax by business segment for food retail has been growing across the years. But if you look at the surface, you won't understand things. Because as I was looking at the books, 
food retail is broken down into quite a few parts. The first, of course, is their mixed vegetable rice, which I love. They are Teochew porridge, they are dim sum, they have a lot of dim sum outlets. But they lump in together some other brands, such as their Tonkichi restaurant, as well as their River Gauche confectionery shops, which they acquired at the end of 2018. My guess is this box up, these two brands have been dragging the numbers down a little bit. Simply because they've actually acquired this in 2018. They acquired three Tonkichi restaurants and 10 River Gauche confectionery shops. But right now, it's only two and nine, which means they've actually lost outlets. And I'm actually not a fan of the River Gauche cakes and stuff. They look so premium. I haven't actually bought from them before. I don't know about you. But I think these two brands are not attractive at all. I rather they continue to do pao and mix vegetable rice because that's, that's really going to help things. And if we look in terms of the selling and distribution expenses, it's actually spiked up. If you look at numbers, it's 1.2 million, but it's actually a 30% increment. Administrative expenses also surged up, which means they've been eating into profits. Not very profitable a segment. If I have something to suggest, maybe break up these numbers. Um, hopefully, management don't leave everything in terms of the food retail division, they break up in terms of own managed one as well as purchase brands. Maybe they'll give investors a lot more insights as to what, what is profitable and what's not. But management has actually shared you know, something um, that I find good to hear. They're actually moving towards direct asset ownership of food outlets. They are looking to do more coffee shops again. They are bread and butter business for many, many years. And they are looking to not buy brands, they're looking to operate their own brand. And they've actually opened this Kanaji Katsu, the first one in one of their coffee shops itself. So free management has learned a lesson. They are looking to manage their own brands. It's much more profitable that way than to go and buy one with IPO money and integrate a brand in. And then, you know, the profit margins are not that good. It's going to drag the overall business in. So hopefully with that, it gives you a quick roundup. Kim Lee is the king of coffee shops. Kofu owns many food courts, but Kim Lee owns 65 coffee shops they are king of coffee shops and in singapore it's actually a very simple and stable business i remember something that that i read before on one up on wall street which i want to share with you something mentioned by peter lynch this is what he has to say if you visit a company a brand regularly you'll get a good chance to know the business operations way better than analysts themselves so you're not inferior in any way when it comes to in investing in such companies Kim Lee, if I'm not wrong, or rather in my interpretation, is a steward company. They are a long-established brand. They are a big market player. It need not be DPS, Singtel. Kim Lee is the king in terms of their niche and their established player. So as long as they do their bread and butter well, they will be profitable. It's just what kind of price to buy in. I want to end things with by showing you their dividends also. Their dividends has been very stable. As you can see over there, dividend yield about 3 to 4% but they've been paying out dividends regularly and I don't expect their numbers to be changing very much regardless of any COVID-19 situation that will re-arise or not. So in a lot of ways, I feel Kim Lee is a good dividend company. Whether it suits your investment approach, leave them in the comment sections. And again, if you have benefited, smash on like so more people can see valuable content like this. And before you leave, I have something interesting to show you. This is actually a previous video I've done on how to select high dividend companies. In that presentation, I've actually showed how to look for companies with growing you know, earnings per share, as well as how to find companies that will fit your dividend portfolio. So maybe that video, especially if you're a new investor, is something that's going to be very much of use to you. So with that, I'll sign off. I'll see you in that video. Take care and goodbye.